Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll shoot him a text. Is he working today? <laughs> Sometimes he actually works. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening and uh, late afternoon going into evening. Um, we've got a fairly decent schedule, I think, um, to be able to go through there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start right off the bat, get things moving. And it looks like we have uh, Judge Nicole Collier. Mr. Mayor, if I may, um, uh, Judge Collier is not quite out of court yet. Okay. So could we, by chance, go to the second uh, item? Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be all right. Yeah, is everybody okay with that? Moving to the second one so sure. the judge gets here. Great. Um, so let's talk about snow removal and ordinance change. Mr. Chambers. You know, the members of council, um, I'm actually going to, Andrew, feel free to jump in and correct, add whatever anytime you'd like. Um, as you know, there was a concern brought forward, oh, several meetings ago about people plowing snow either out of their driveways, sidewalks, parking lots, into the street, um, causing issues for plow drivers and traffic flow, and also uh, folks uh, kind of taking it upon themselves to basically plow the city streets, and it's caused some problems for <coughs> Streets and, and snowplow operators uh, with having to remove snow twice, causing traffic blockages, and so on. And we were asked to look into whether or not there was an existing ordinance that could deal with it. And what we found is there really wasn't. Uh, there's a state statute on obstructing roadways that's very vague, very poorly defined, doesn't specifically say putting snow in the roadway or blocking traffic is an issue. So the solution was to bring forward a proposed ordinance to you to see if that was something that your approval to move forward to actually address people putting their snow into the, the roadways. And it's not targeted, from what I understand, for the, you know, the individual homeowner who's throwing a shovel full to the left instead of the right and ends up in the street. This is for people who are taking their parking lots, pushing the snow out into the public right away and causing problems for our, our snow removal operations. So um, you have in your packet a draft ordinance. And I noticed there's, it's going to take a little bit of stylistic and typo cleanup. Um, Authorized is not a word, believe it or not, so we'll fix that one. I, I, I told Chief McFeeders it was snow, so I was thinking skiing, San Moritz, that's how I ended it. Um, and basically what it does is it makes it unlawful for anybody to take their snow and push it out into the public right-of-way, or for anybody other than an authorized municipal, state, or county employee to uh, do the plowing in effect on the city street. Enforcement is proposed to be code enforcement officers or city police officers, um, either by a citation or a summons that will come to the affidavit summons that will come to our office. And again, with the idea this is for problem repeat violators, when we know that somebody that owns this large parking lot is constantly pushing snow out, we can do a summons for them. Uh, the penalty in the draft is just a, a standard uh, misdemeanor, mis 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 which would be, in theory, up to 750. Yeah, I think it would be up to the judges to decide what, what actual amount to find. I know the there was talk of doing like a, a a civil or administrative type penalty. And as I looked through that, it's honestly, it, as far as administering that and enforcing that, it's very, very cumbersome and drawn out. Just you know, even if council decides that they want to set a little token fine for first offenses, it would be uh, far more effective and, and functional than trying to do something administratively. So that's where we're at, and basically looking for your, I guess, direction whether to bring a, uh, a more polished version forward to an actual meeting for approval or if there's things that you want to do. Questions? <coughs> Dawson, then Amanda. I don't know. And then Chris. Is it, is it Andrew who knows about the, the problems? Because <coughs> I. Council? Yeah, I. Here's what I'd like to know. How big a problem is this really? I think you had a, a, a pretty good preview of it after this weekend's snowstorm. We have a number of violators that will routinely plow their parking lots out into our city streets. And you know who they are? We do know who they are. <laughs> and they right now, they're giving us a little bit of lip service because there's, we can tell them, please, but there's nothing, no real enforcement mechanism for us to really get their attention. So, here's a question for both of you. I, I don't mind addressing that issue. Some, I think we should. I just don't want to have any, I don't think we ought to, pick on our people whether they sh shovel their snow on that street. The other thing I need to know just for my own, is there a law against going, driving through that, when they, the row? The wind row? Yeah. 
I don't believe there's a lot of driving through it, but uh, you're uh, risking some damage to the underside of your But vehicle. it's not a crime? Thank God. <laughs> okay. Have you been doing that? <laughs> I do it too. I'm not confessing to anything, but... Uh, <laughs> so, thank you for that, but... Uh, you know, this is Wyoming, I, I, and, and you're right, I drove around, and since we're considering this ordinance, Mr. Mayor, I, I saw people shoveling into the street, all up and down Poplar Street, every major street where they're shoveling their walks. I saw a guy with a blade on his truck moving the snow out into that row, and he actually did a pretty good job, I thought. So I just, I was going to video it and put it on Facebook and I changed my mind. I just didn't, I'm not a policeman, so I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But if there's, the, the thing that would disturb me is if people are moving large amounts of snow, they're too high and they're, they're but what, what do, what will they, are they moving it because they have to out there or is there a place they could, like the mall, but they have these huge piles of snow and then, and then the water is running forever, you know, too. Andrew, I, I'm just wondering about all that stuff. Your Honor, Council, there is no easy solution. I mean, some people, businesses will pay for their hollows to actually haul the snow off site. Some of the bigger entities like Sunrise or the mall will plow <coughs> to a light pole or to an empty portion of their lot and let it sit there and it will melt over time. But you're right, it creates icy conditions throughout many of the uh, winter months. But I've always wondered too why you leave those two uh, up by the hospital, those tree line in the middle of the street, because that 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 leaks water when it starts melting, and that's a mess up there. I can't even imagine we leave those there, but something to think about. You know what I'm talking about? Those little islands the up by the hospital. The medians, and yeah, the medians. I know where the leaking. Well, leaking. I'm using that when it when it, when they move the snow. It's the last place is wet when you go through there. Everything's dry, and then it's wet through there, and the snow is thrown up on those islands. It doesn't really look that great, but I guess it's decorative in the summer. That's all, that's all I'm going to say about it. Thanks. <laughs> Who would enforce this? Either as it was drafted, either PD or code enforcement. And let's say what we're envisioning is when code enforcement gets complaints like they do now, they maybe come to us with an affidavit with summons and the, the property owner is doing it. So again, the idea not being somebody drove around and saw somebody shovel in the wrong direction to the, the problem parking lot. PD, in theory, could if they wanted to write citations. <coughs> so it's my understanding that this is more intended for commercial properties that are pushing a large amount of snow into the street rather than me shoveling my snow into the street. That's, that's the intent. Now, I'm sure there are residential properties <coughs> that, that cause problems, and I, you know, I'd ask Andrew you know, what they've noticed as far as the... Uh, it is not the residential property owners that are simply shoveling because they've got some kind of barrier between the, their sidewalk and their yard so they can't lift it and they throw it in the gutter. That's not the, the, uh, the property owners we're trying to address with this ordinance. But would that, that would this Hold on one second. Give, oh, I've got Chris and then Kenina, and then you want to go down with Go ahead, Chris. You know, we referenced the state statute being <coughs> ambiguous, not specifically stating snow. Specifically says obstruction. <coughs> a snow drift in the road is an obstruction. You take a picture of it, and, the, you know, statutes have to be written so that the common man can understand it. And obstruction doesn't have to be defined. It's whatever that thing is in the road. And it would have to go through circuit court. They, they're not going to want to spend time on it. Correct. Um, <coughs> if this were to pass, there's going to be an ordinance that um, you're not going to get satisfaction on either because the police can't even respond to all the accidents that are happening when these things are occurring. Um, and so we've got a law that I'm telling you, you just realistically will not be enforced. Um, and we're we, I understand the intent, um, but you're potentially criminalizing the dude with a snowblower that's blowing it out into the street. <coughs> um, and I can just tell you from my past as a police officer, you get a warrant for somebody that failed to appear for a snow violation, and there's, it's not really something you want to do, but the warrant will say to any officer, I command you to arrest this person. Um, and it'll be all my neighbors. I mean, it could be. Uh, and 
and Amanda. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I appreciate the aggravation that you your guys have to go through, but I don't think it's worth making it a criminal situation. Um, if people are so bad at their businesses that they shut it down, I wouldn't be opposed to putting barricades across the street and saying we can't do anything until they clean their snow out of it. Because the road's <laughs> obstructed. Make sure his cell phone number is the one that pops up first. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. I like that. Go ahead, Andrew. I was going to say, Your Honor, that, that may create some additional problems for us. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it would. Go ahead, Kenny. I think I see the reason for needing the tool in the tool shed because I've seen the commercial flower guys plow everything right down to, into our street and it screws up the whole windrow. Um, but there's a very angry man on 21st Street, too, that uses a four-wheeler and plows all of his snow from his large... Um, driveway and then it starts to block off 21st Street when you're trying to pass so I think the intent is for those types of situations and not um, us out there shoveling although I never throw snow into the street I'm just saying you lie. I know I shoveled my parents's and I threw it right back into their grass so that the <coughs> grass would be wet but I think we have to have something for the commercial guys that are plowing <coughs> snow and for those residential places that have so much property that they're creating a safety issue. So I'm for it. Good, Dallas, and then Jesse. I would think that we need to tailor the ordinance a little more narrowly and just address this problem. Because I, I agree from Andrew's talking about we should have some teeth in, but I don't want I don't like the ordinance it is now. It's it's just as the chief ex chief says it's criminalizing behavior that people have done in Wyoming ever since I've grown up here. I, I wouldn't vote for this present ordinance. I would want to see it re, redrafted to specifically address the problem of the, the abusers, not some grandma who shovels her snow and then she's scared because she now she, and I think what you'll find when you do this is people won't shovel their walks anymore because they don't want to accidentally get some <laughs> real law abiders. They won't. But the older people, they won't shovel their walks. Uh, Jesse and then Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I just agree with uh, Dallas in regards of how it's written. Any person, I don't like that language in there. And then what about buildings that don't have parking lots, for example, or no green space that are able to <coughs> push um, the sidewalk stuff that's going to go right into the street? So then you know, we're going to potentially find those people. And talking about obstruction, as soon as it gets off the sidewalk, it's not really obstructing um, traffic at that point, a parked car could take that space too. So, you know, I think it'd be tough to enforce that actual obstruction as it's seen. I understand, you know, wind drifts and things like that could cause a problem, but, you know, just even my street, for example, everybody's putting their stuff into the driveway or out of the driveway onto the street. Is that really obstructing the street? Not necessarily. Park, park a car right there too and take up the same space. So it's, uh, it's a tough one, but as it's written and now it's, as it's presented, I don't, I don't like it. Chris? How about this? How about we, because the city ordinance is a difficult one. Why don't we just put in that one, the very simple language, you can't obstruct a street. Nothing about snow, nothing we've got. <coughs> Prosecutors, attorneys, lawyers, or judges, I brought you a picture of a snowdrift that was blocking the street. Every man with common sense is a person of common sense. Yeah. Is going to look at it and go, look, it's obstructed. Now it melted because it's a perishable obstruction by the time we go to court. But can't we look at that ordinance? I'd be specific about snow. Not possible, Will. I don't think the judges would want to touch that. They don't want to touch it. No. Well, I'm not going to speak for you. <laughs> I'm just saying, I can tell by the twinkle in there, they're like, don't send that our way. <laughs> what do you think, Will? Well, Your Honor, Councilman Washer, you brought up earlier, and Councilman Morgan, the, the draft of this ordinance actually doesn't talk about obstruction. And the problem I had when I looked at the state one was that obstruct, well, define obstruct. Right, if you're in a, a Mini Cooper, this <laughs> much is going to be an obstruction. You know, you probably, uh, your Wrangler or whatever, or a, you know, the, the Glenda Boggin is going to be a <laughs> foot pile. Before it's an obstruction. <laughs> so we're going to have some proof issues. <coughs> obstruct. I think that's why we drafted it. But just don't push it into 
industry, period. Um, and also because even a smaller amount has been causing them some drainage problems in the gutters and the, if I understood Chad's uh, comments earlier, is that correct? Yeah, it can impede drainage. <coughs> and even pushing a large amount of snow just into the gutter line, I mean, it's a relatively narrow road. You hit one of those snow piles, that is a real hazard. So can, so I can ask the council if, if as is, just so I can get a feel, if we had to ask if we wanted to move forward with this current verbiage, who would support it as is right now? I guess I just kind of want to. I think so. Sure about that. Nobody probably notices. <laughs> <laughs> not not <laughs> obviously. <obviously. laughs> if, if I may. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I guess I would trust the people that are going to be administering it, and it's probably going to be not so much the PD as as the people that are do the regular code of <coughs> government. You're going to have the people that we know are a problem child, but I, I can't see anybody going out and you know if somebody is doing you know what you say, just shoveling into the street. <coughs> we're we're not going to bother those people. But you know, you get somebody that's a repeat offender, especially a lot of it is done by commercial operators now. And so it'd be the commercial operator that gets a ticket, and he would find that pretty inappropriate once in a while. He gets four or five tickets for doing this, and he might learn not to do it. Um, and then Charlie. Is there a way to add a clarification of, you know, this is not intended for the individual shoveler? Because I agree with Dallas that some people, if we make that change, are not going to stop shoveling out of fear that they're going to be sanctioned. I can certainly <coughs> look at attempting to draft it in a way that I just I hate to build in too much of a limitation on enforcement just because it is always so case by case. Right. I mean, you could conceivably have the individual shoveler on a narrow old tree street that really is blocking Cold Street, or that just habitually does it even after being talked about code enforcement. So I kind of I see the argument. I hope that we could have you know, enforcement uh, discretion, but I, I can play with some language and see if we can come up with something that might work. Okay. That's council's desire. Charlie. The chief is going to laugh, laugh when I say this, but most people obey the law most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea of an ordinance isn't to arrest people, <coughs> find them, but to sort of create an expectation that this is this is how people are expected to deal with their snow. I would guess most of the people in our community aren't even aware that the snow is not supposed to go out in the street. It's supposed to go into their yard. And they don't really intend to cause any trouble by doing so, but it, but it can. And so I, I, I think, I think uh, it's reasonable to say, look, uh, uh, think about the other people in the community and don't do this. And so I, I, to me it's not about you know, finding people and and catching them up, catching them on a failure to appear warrant or anything like that, but giving <coughs> our folks the discretion to kind of deal with some of the folks that have simply given us lip service and continued the practice. So, I I, I think it, uh, there's a story behind every rule in our book, and the story behind this is it's created some real problems. People want to say. It's only for commercial vendors. I guess I'd be okay with that. But I do think generally people should keep the snow off the streets. If it's just been plowed, somebody you know uses their snow blower and throws a bunch of fresh snow on the street, you know that that makes my street a little less passable than it was. And it was not that big a deal for them to turn their <laughs> snow blower around and blow it into their yard instead. Dallas, final word, and then we'll take it. This is Wyoming. We didn't even use to plow the streets. People got around with two-wheel drives. And then you'd see crowds of people pushing somebody from being stuck. This, And then, Charlie, if there's a big snowstorm here, people are going to have to move that snow any way they can to get out. out. And, the, and it'll be out in the street, it'll be everywhere. And thank God it melts and blows away. Mm -hmm. To make this an issue, I, I've had people just say, are you people just wasting your time down here? You don't have anything else to do? You're worried about moving snow in Casper, Wyoming, where everybody knows how to do it already. I don't like the guy who's doing what he's saying, but I think the, the statute that's out there 
Maybe we ought to make a run on enforcing that if it's, it's if it's the big bad guy that it's obvious that he's wheeled all that snow out there and is overwhelming us because then let the court decide it. That's why they get paid the big money and only work every other month. So Will had made, made comment that he would, would be able to kind of rework it according to what Amanda had said that we could put something in there not to for smaller guy out there just shoveling, shoveling on the sidewalk to the street. And I don't want to make a rule where I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> You're trying to protect yourself. <laughs> lucky I get in trouble. <laughs> I'm fine with it the way it is. I can live with this. I can trust the people that are going to be administering us. We're not going to be arresting people daily. All right. But if you've got a repeat offender. <laughs> so those in favor for the ordinance to go or to go forward as is. Give them the discretion. Yes, it does. That's four four. four. Okay. Doesn't pass, does it? Yeah. So you know, sure. the VA you guys to come back with some of this tweak a little more for larger what do you guys think? Kind of uh, or it would be springtime. <laughs> <laughs> this is like motorcycle noise. The problem <laughs> will be solved. No snow shoveling in August. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Charlie. Old, Charlie's got a question. It'll be over in mid, mid mark So it's not a problem, really. It's not a problem. I never heard of a, a, a response yeah. to Chris's comment about couldn't you just do this as an obstruction? Try. And again, I, we have not tried that I know of. And my thought again is, how do we necessarily improve obstruction? Did it slow somebody do down a little bit? Did it prevent? Did it make it completely impassable? Was there a you know little low slung car stuff that the truck went through, so was it really obstructed? I, I could just see a lot of proof problems. I mean, I but we have it. not, to answer your question, no, we have not taken a run at it that I know of. Is that that's. Seems my limit. Is that our ordinance, or is that the state statute that uses the word? The state statute talks about obstructing the highway. Our ordinance is really only talking about. I saw one that talked about obstruction through the sidewalk, obstruction of awnings, and things that didn't even really address snow. So we, we actually don't even address it. Normally, a statute has a definition of terms. So we couldn't find any that, it, again, whether it's abstract as an impede or make or completely block. Um, okay. So well. anyway. It, so do you guys just want to let it be then? I'd say let's check. Let's let's revisit it in July. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you could get a sense of where Sean's at? I could find out, I guess. Yeah. And just that way we know the numbers. Okay. <coughs> Let me see where Sean's at, and then we can. Okay. By that time, it might be. <laughs> It'll be April. Nature will correct the problem. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Sorry, you gotta have somebody know that it's not the state of mind on commercial snow plows. Um uh, Judge Collier's not here yet, so let's go ahead and move to number three. Um the sponsor resolution ordinances. Uh, Carter. Thank you. Um a week or two ago, I can't remember exactly, we had a suggestion that uh, council consider a process by which resolutions and ordinances would come forward under the sponsorship of one among your body. Um, we, uh, we, I, I should say, I'm only aware of another community, one of the community that has a similar process. And after looking into that, the uh, the resource material of which we attach to your to your memo, um, that particular brand of this idea I, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't know if you had the opportunity to look at that or not, but it seemed very bureaucratic and uh, lab laborious and and uh, and so forth. And so I'm sure that, that that probably wasn't what the members of this group had in mind when the idea came to the table and was suggested for discussion this evening. And so with that, uh, what I would ask is that council flesh this idea out for staff and, and we can certainly uh, move in whatever direction you'd like us to, provide more information, whatever it is that council would like to see. Chris. I think it's a good idea to have this associated with someone that's, that's sponsoring it, and that, that Cheyenne method is, there's no sense in overcomplicating it. Um, why couldn't we make it as simple as if two people on council agree, if one sponsors it, then it could be brought up for discussion. It doesn't mean it ever leaves a work session. 
Um, so let's say I come up with some awful <coughs> ideas. Hypothetical. Hypothetical, yeah, because it, it, only, it usually only happens, you know, in the morning or something. But, um, or a, a citizen comes to us with um, well, the prime. The thing that brought this up was the resolution. Um, you look around the table, and, and at least nobody's taking credit for. Well, yeah, that was. I invited him in. I brought this up, and I'm. I'm not targeting. It. It's just the most recent example. Um, <coughs> That way, there's that point of contact on the council. A couple members say you think it's worthy to bring before everyone else, and then it, this, the decision is still the bodies, but there's not committee meetings and that kind of stuff like you see in Cheyenne. Yeah. I think responsibility should be <coughs> attached to every major decision and, and every major activity. I mean, to include selling city properties and that kind of stuff. And the easy way to do that, um, I just think that falls on the mayor's position. You bring, hey, we want, we want to sell these properties. Yeah, of course, I'll sponsor that or bring it forward. But um, that's my thoughts on it. I'm looking forward to be attached to an individual point of contact. Uh, Dallas and then Bob. Well, that's the way they have to do it in the legislature. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they, somebody sponsors a bill and then they all decide whether they even want to hear it. Let's take the, the for instance, of a resolution. Somebody wants a resolution passed. I don't think they ought to be able to get it on here, running it through the, the city manager. I think they, what they want a resolution, we get it, we take a look at it, see if we want to deal with it. And then we vote on whether we want to deal with it, and then move from there. But for people to just be able to put stuff in front of us, put us under the gun uh, for things that may not be on our priority list is, is, uh, uh, is something I'd like to see not happen anymore. So if that fits in with our discussion, that's... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I kind of agree with uh, Carter's analysis of what's going on here. We better look at Cheyenne. It's a strong mayor form for government. And that is a whole different animal what happens in council and a strong mayor versus where we sit. Um, your, your sentence about a majority of council wanting to bring forward something, I think that's reasonable. Uh, we might add uh, something I would like to sponsor, and I have three co-sponsors for this. And you would all raise your hand, you have a discussion, and then have a vote, and majority decides whether it comes uh, comes to the, the whole council. Because I think it's been working reasonably well the way it is, and I think Cheyenne is just overcomplicating this. It's way too much bureaucracy, I think. Yeah. I, I think it's a good idea, too. I, uh, I don't think it's that different from what we've been doing, where uh, someone from a member of the public will come to the podium and present something to us and someone on council will say, I think that should go on the work session agenda. Well, they didn't say I'm sponsoring it, but it got on the work session agenda because one of us said, we think this is worth talking about, which is essentially how this, this particular resolution got on our, our agenda, was a public presentation at the podium in a meeting, people looking around saying, okay, let's talk about this. <coughs> so, and, and I would be fine to simply say, for the, for, for the mayor to simply say, does someone want to sponsor this? And then to get a, a raised hand. But I don't think it's really that different from what, the way we've been out. Yeah, other than filling all of Shine's paperwork. That's just oh, I don't want to. Do <laughs> well, I, 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 none of us want to do that. Terrible. Sure. We kill them terrible. 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 So Chris, Chris made the, the suggestion that <coughs> we have one sponsor and then we have another person. Um, that would move that forward. Is that something that we'd want to have, like one person to do that, two people to do that? How does that, how would that look? Would you guys even care about what that would Because what was your thought again, Chris? Well, kind of like a, a motion in a second, but it doesn't even have to be that complicated. It, you know, let's say I came in and said, hey, I want to propose this, and the, everybody else in the work session said, no, that's it. So it could be as easy as, my, my biggest push is to have an individual as a point of contact that person responsible for bringing it forward. Okay. Perfect. Is everybody okay with that? So how would this actually, sorry. No, no. How, how, how would this actually play out then? Would, um, would I come to a work session and say, I'd like to propose that this get on the agenda, and then someone else would have to say, yes, I, I agree, and then it would go on the agenda? Is that what you have in mind? 
No, it doesn't even have to be that complicated. You could say, I propose we put this on the agenda, but I think then we give you the courtesy of that night saying, okay, let's put it on the agenda. Um, there have been a lot of things talked about, a lot of ideas, a lot of things that, that stop right here. They don't move forward. So we have a sheet like this that has agenda items and Powell's issue, Walsh's issue, Morgan's issue, and what's the status on them, and when do we see any type of closure on them? Where, where's it gone? Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I just, I think. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Yeah, okay. I just think we need to have some clarity for staff as far as how they're supposed to, what changes are really needed here to make this happen. Well, furthermore, Mr. Mayor, if I may, um, what we could do is put together some sort of policy statement at least that could go into the council rules and protocols if you will assuming council would adopt that particular draft and then that would be the the protocol from here forward and uh, that would be memorialized beyond this particular sitting council uh, so if, we, if you'd like us to take a crack at that we certainly could we call it the Walsh and, maybe, and maybe I could Walsh Walsh and attach it to me <laughs> <laughs> memorialize it into well and that's so here's a here's a good there's a good point Carter's gonna have staff do it show me as the sponsor let me take a look at it right before you finalize it and everybody else has to read it and then if it's if it looks like that was my intent not over complicated I don't want to put a lot into it back yeah um can we present it and do great council great. guideline kind of a thing you betcha yeah. so then you you'll be able to give Chris yeah. can over and Absolutely. Then present it to the uh, that would be very helpful. Can we use yeah. that for a Willis photo of you? Yeah. And, and, and the next just topic is guns. <laughs> You're the sponsor. And just, to, just to make it uh, a, a, <laughs> an open process, to me it would be perfectly acceptable for someone to sponsor something that they weren't even in favor of because they believed it should be something that the council would have a, make a decision on. I agree with you. So yeah. if you, you just got to be the person that says, okay, I'm going to track this and I'm going to make sure it moves through the system or doesn't move through the <coughs> system. Or if you want to know why, come ask me. I'll tell you where it's at. To me, an example, in the smoking ban, I wanted to have that be a referendum. That, that was my whole goal from the very beginning. I hate to bring it up, but, but I, was, <laughs> I was going to say, you want to bring that back I was in favor of it, <laughs> but I wanted to see it go to an election. <laughs> That's yes, it did. So I'll sorry. sponsor. You. Sorry. <laughs> it's too bad you mentioned that. <laughs> Jesse. Just a quick uh, question, I guess, for clear. <coughs> so, if somebody sponsors it, is that going to be in the memo or the resolution once we see it on the floor? Um, you know, resolution 1 A, sponsored by councilman, whoever. Is that? I like that idea. Mm -hmm. I do too. Okay. It's a good idea. Is this about the smoking thing? Yeah, it's only going to take me two sentences. Two sentences. Maybe you find those if you try to so he's back in the so country. so. I have a client <laughs> oh, who you know. And so he's come up with an idea. Why don't we pass an ordinance that says if a bar wants to be a smoking bar, they come down, pay five thousand dollars to the city, and get a sticker saying they can smoke in their bar. You come up with the sponsorship no, for it and bring it for the it. council. So now we'll vote on it. So now, so now, <laughs> I, but I now I we have know, a process. I gotta wait till I some think of these. I know the guy. talking about it. some of these council yeah. members have to leave before I'll bring that up. <laughs> we just go ahead and smack him. I'm I'm like thinking I'm gonna go get my pistol here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, it brings in income to the city. They're designated smoking bar. The health of our public, we don't need to discuss this ever again. <laughs> For the mental does that give you? <laughs> does that give you yes, enough, sir. enough information? Really everything moving forward. Okay, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll bring, we'll bring the draft back, back in, <laughs> and then we'll <laughs> Chris can go through that. We just want to get this guy to come to work for us. We want to quit. So we're still waiting for um, the judge to come here. So let's talk about boards and commission assignments. I know I had sent out an email um, and had the conversation with. Do you have the thing? Do you need one? I might have a car stop. 
So it was in the packet, and we had had the conversation with some of it. I'd send an email just seeing if anybody was interested in anything. I heard back from a couple people, um, some that they were, they were really interested in. Um, uh, and so I didn't know if we wanted to look at this really quick, see where everybody is at. Um, I am uh, currently, I decided to take myself off the uh, Housing Authority and Community Action Partnership. Um, I did ask Amanda if she would think about the Community Action Partnership. Um, we hadn't talked anymore about that. I was going to kind of leave that open. But just wanted to talk a little bit about that and see where everybody was at um, to see how they felt about um, assignments and so forth. So. Did you change these from the other one you sent out? Yeah. Oh, no. No, these are the same. The only ones, well, the ones that people had requested. The only thing that's on here are the ones that people requested, what they wanted. I thought I saw one where you put me down for the economic development. You are. You should be on there. <laughs> They'll love that. <laughs> Uh, that one, yeah, but he actually had my name in there on the Oh, well, there you are. Yeah, that's, that's an old one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Charlie's okay. kind of found me up here. Yeah, 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 here's the new, the new one. Is, yeah, you're on the economic development. Yeah. And, and, I, and I have to admit, uh, I don't know if this is the place to bring this up, but I think we ought to change those every now and then when people get on different boards and everybody gets the experience. But I, I don't want to be on it for years and years. I don't even know if I'll be here for years and years, but to me, a year is enough sure. for damn near anything, darn near anything. And so uh, I just want to understand it to a deeper level so that I can make decisions. But I don't want to be on there so long where you end up being biased towards it and not even really realizing sure. you are. Sure. Amanda and then Charlie. I agree with Alice. Um, and what I said earlier, I talked to Charlie about before you came. Uh -huh. Of letting him do leader because I can't seem to ever make that oh, right, right. Um, but Bob had mentioned maybe having me sit on both housing <coughs> and cap. If you want to do both, you're more than welcome to. Okay. I'll do both. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Thanks, Amanda. Mm -hmm. I think you should be on round four. But yes. Just to remind <coughs> everyone that that very topic is on our retreat schedule. We're not calling that a retreat. Oh, our, our strategic planning. It's a dance party. Because Chris goes berserk. I'm a quick retreat. I, I, I can't do it. got to hug moves. people out. <laughs> yeah, you probably find me at a dance party before retreating. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. See? That's um, what I'm saying I, I don't know. I don't want to speak for Bob, but we, the Central Wyoming Water System, Bob's been on that for a while. I don't Actually, just about a year. Yeah, so it's it's not showing you there. That's what I was saying. I didn't know Where if you was off Chris? of it or... City yeah, I, services. city services. I just look at it that that board is uh, <coughs> spends the most money of any of the boards that we participate in, and I think it's good experience to have that experience on that board. Because you had you had requested you were okay with having somebody else sit on, correct? Absolutely. Bob? Okay. Yeah. So Bob had gotten back to me and said that um, he would be okay with letting someone else be on that one, um, just to give them that experience um, if somebody's interested in sitting on that uh, that joint powers board for that. And it is a you know, it is a fairly convenient time. If you're if you're working for a living, you can generally get a lunch hour off. So that tends Bob, to work pretty well. They do feed you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you get on that wastewater board I'm on? You'd at least you'd understand. I've been on that one years ago before Mike, I nominate yeah, I Jesse. Question is for the whole group. What's the value of sitting on some of these boards, especially the ones that we don't have a vote or a say in? Information. And how Charlie. does that information, do you feel like you get that information shared to all of council effectively? Well, we need to do a better job of that, I agree. But um, I, I think the solution, if we're information poor, is not to have less information. SharePoint has been a big help for that. Right. So. Yeah, so I just, Keep going. My, my caveat is I personally think attending most of these boards and commissions are a waste of time. I'd rather see us meet as a body twice a week than all of us going out to um, different groups that we don't actually have a vote or a say in that are really just being our best buddy to work us over so that we'll come make a pitch to give them extra funding. I understand that where we have voting members we probably have to follow through but I make the pitch to get rid of as many boards and commissions as we can that we're not voting members of. Uh, Dallas and then Amanda. Is this going to be a she said Dallas, then Amanda. You said she? Or he said. You've got me. I've got everybody. She. God is a she now. Uh, is this going to be discussed at the 
Yeah, I, th I think it is. I think I would say the same thing. At let's our, let's have that be a strategic yeah. plan. Because because I agree. Issue. I agree with Kanine about that. I've said that, but I think we ought to consider appointing individuals to go to those meetings just like we do on these other boards and then they give us a report. They'll be happy to do it when you appoint people. Yes, you go sit down there on this board and that board and great and you give the you send us a one page report on what happened. I can read that and be ready to rock. I mean And the reason we, I wanted to get the ball moving so we were prepared by our our strategic yeah. plan. I wanted to make sure to see where everybody was at. And we can have more in-depth conversation because I know where certain people have felt about it. Mm -hmm. and we've had I've had private conversations with some of you about it. Um, certain boards, certain committees, and as liaisons and so forth. I share some of those sentiments as well. Um, uh, and I also understand where Charlie's coming from. He's been one of the biggest advocates for boards and committees. And so we can have that conversation. I think to see what is our, um, you know, what do we gain from that? Um, what do we don't? What don't we gain? And how can we utilize the process better? Um, and so, but I wanted to see where everybody was at and, and where you guys are feeling, and then we can have that conversation when we, when we have our strategic planning session. Perfect. Okay. Sounds really good. I'm stretching here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple jokes and stuff. Do you want me to go into well, this? Round table uh, takes a lot of time. Oh, okay. that's <laughs> true. <laughs> you got a lot today, Jesse? I have a couple of Awesome. Good. <laughs> just in case. I'm just going to get you up here if I need you. So can't one of the other judges start the... I'm not sure. It doesn't you know, rock it. We need to. It, you know, uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, that certainly could be the case because they're all in unison, if you will, with regard to what the court's asking. But but Judge Collier is the one that, that did put the presentation together. Yeah. And that kind of we can thing. move on to legislation. Chris, go ahead. I mean, I've read it, so I, I, I don't know that I'm, clearly she's tied up. We don't, maybe everybody else has it, though, so. Has everybody felt like I'm going to go around to it, I mean. I'm fine. I've it's read it. I have a couple it. comments to make about it, and yeah. so that everybody's aware yeah. of it. What do you think? Uh, I know these guys can answer all the They can. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. let's see if we can maybe start the conversation then. If you guys are okay with that, we if can. You want to do that? Can right? we still go? Yeah, I'm, go through I'm personally, Mr. Mayor, I'm just not prepared to do a presentation. Okay. I've looked sure at this about judgment. two times in the past month. Okay. I, I'm familiar with the issue, but I'm not, not really to the, the point of making okay. the presentation. Yeah. Well, let's, let's give it a little bit more time then. Yeah, what I was going to suggest, Ray, this is just a presentation, and it, it could be done. It's not going to take a great deal of time. It could be added to a regular agenda if we have to. Okay. If she can't make sure. it tonight. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Um, all right. Let's go to a legislative update. If you have anything today, Charlie. Okay. Um, well, we're getting closer. The session um, starts February eighth. Let me get my stuff out here. First off. Pitch for WAM Winter Conference, <laughs> February 21st, 22nd, 23rd. If you have misgivings about WAM, best way to get educated about WAM, go to a winter conference. It's hard. I mean, I have to cancel out my practice for three days. I don't like doing that, but I think it's that valuable that we participate and, and make some connections with people uh, around the state who face similar problems. Sometimes you get an idea or two for completely unique solution that, that a community has developed to a problem that we face that you never would have thought of if you hadn't had a conversation with those folks. And, um, and there is kind of, with us being as spread out as we are, uh, there is kind of a unifying sort of experience when you all get in one place and have the incidental contacts and conversations that you get to have at a time like that. And you start to feel like, you know, we're part of a larger community. And so uh, I I think it's, it's worth the time and um, you know some of the workshops here on budgeting and uh, uh, how, to, how to present at a, a state uh, committee meeting, um, uh, how, to, how to do strategic planning, how to understand the state's budget, um, human resources challenges, ethical dilemmas that we all face as council members. This is just a emergency preparedness uh, update. Uh, you know, these are all things that we, we can all do a better job if we know more about them. So um, it's, it, I understand it's a major sacrifice for people to take three days out of their schedule to go somewhere. Um, but 
I think if you do, you'll find that it'll be a worthwhile experience. Is it going to be in Maui? It is in Gillette. Oh, good. Second to none. Stay at Carter's house. <laughs> you could. Or you could buy him my house. <laughs> <laughs> you want to add anything, Jesse, since you've taken the time to go? Um, yeah, sure. I think, you know, attending, of course, the learning workshop or the, uh, the WAM convention that they have every year is beneficial. Um, just as you said, meeting other officials from across the state is great. You, you do get a, a sense of a relationship, and then if you see something that and the news, you know, they'll send me a text, hey, what's going on, or I'll send them a text, um, or they said, oh, I've already addressed this, this is kind of what we've done um, when dealing with that particular issue. Uh, the thing that I find a little frustrating is uh, I understand that everybody can't make it or take time off. It is tough, especially if you have limited vacation. We do pay a good amount. Um, to WAM, so having those consultants that they have that host some of these workshops, I think would be beneficial to have them here, especially when you have a turnover like what we had uh, last election cycle. It just helps, um, it helps council, basically. It helps us be better uh, servants and leaders in our community. So I think, yeah, wholeheartedly, it's beneficial, but you have to use it. We're paying for it, but you know, Charlie, of course, is utilizing it. I'm utilizing it when I can. Uh, like I said, it would be great to have WAM host something possibly in Casper. I know we tried for that particular event, but we already hosted one before, so that took us off the list. But training, and, I think, is important. And, and just to give you all some norms, the, the most common way that people attend a WAM conference is they, they sacrifice, because they all work too, they sacrifice a paid vacation day, and many of them go at their own expense. So. Right. Yeah, but that's, well, that's the WAM convention was in July, that's why I mentioned that. But they'll have Charlie it. said it was. Oh, in, I'm he thought it was in July. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's sorry. even better. Got 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 my bad. Last week was in July. Okay, so that's my pitch. So my my main concern here is I think the ticket price we have to pay is sixty thousand dollars a year. I don't understand that, and I think it's too much for what we get. We're paying too much for several things that would help the manager if we didn't have to pay these big ticket prices we're paying, such as the $450,000 a year ticket price we pay on Takeda and we don't even know what they do. And we have problems with our ice rink and our seats and everything else, and we need a new police station. So I'd like to know though, Charlie, and I know it's one of your, one of your, your partial towards this, and I know you know much more about it than I do, but I do. I do hear your judgment on these kinds of matters. So what they either ought to do is they ought to have more of these in Cheyenne and Casper. We are in the central part of the state, and that would allow us, who pay the biggest ticket price to get in, I believe, so that we can go and not miss three days. So they ought to be thinking about some of that. And that they're not means, like a lot of things I see, with cities is they're insensitive to Casper for some reason. And so, but they don't mind charging us the big ticket price. Well, just so you understand the process, they take bids <coughs> basically to host. And your staff has to basically say, we've got the resources to put this whole thing together because it's a lot of work. And so, um, and there, there was the one occasion where we did put it in bid and, and we were denied because we five-year rule that they've had in place now. We could certainly advocate for that to be changed, but um, I think the idea is to give other communities an opportunity to act as hosts. So anyway, getting back to what's going on with the legislation, um, there are two, um, two committee meetings coming up, um, both of which are in Cheyenne and where we'll be represented, one on school finance and one on the Joint Revenue Committee. And the Joint Revenue Committee, of course, is critical committee that's trying to figure out how to balance the budget and come up with enough resources. Fortunately, some of the pressure under them has uh, been relieved recently, but they still have a major bill to deal with as far as school funding. Um, so, um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you about? I'm going to just quickly go through a couple of bills that are on the docket that uh, will be heard, and, and one we've heard about, but I want to say a little more about it. 
Um, first off, um, House Bill 12, they're talking about speeding fines and lowering state fines, and there was some question as to whether it would be legal for cities to maintain their fine structure if the state lowered theirs, and WAM is just monitoring this. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to, there's a discussion on daylight savings time that you all read about. WAM is not taking a position on that. We're just monitoring it. Uh, there's also a bill on underground facilities notice for engineering and architects. We're monitoring that. And there's some question about how much expense that would add to uh, engineering um, costs. Um, then there's another bill, House Bill 61, that, would, that prohibits roadside waiver of property rights. And this is that whole issue of pulling someone over and taking the cash in their car, uh, with the idea that some people with large amounts of cash are up to no good. <laughs> so we are monitoring, we are monitoring uh, that as well. Uh, we're supporting a bill on uh, per that, that uh, basically creates Purple Heart Day. Um, as I think you all know, uh, we've gotten some real good response to the funding request for that $105 million that uh, really is essential for funding of the uh, municipalities and counties. Uh, but we're running into a lot of trouble with this extraterritorial extra jurisdiction bill. Um, I have a copy of it. Uh, essentially, the bill that's, that, that passed through committee, as I think you all are aware, basically eliminates the city influence at, the, at our borders completely. And uh, there are many stories that are being told about uh, uh, inappropriate use of that authority or uh, situations where that authority was really essential for the safety of the citizens. Uh, there's ongoing negotiations between uh, the Wyoming, what is WCC again? Wy County Wyoming Commissioners. County Commissioners Association <coughs> and WAM to try to figure out some kind of a compromise. Um, and uh, some, of the, some of the issues where that have come up involve cell towers and tower, cell tower placement. I, I know Carter had his issue up in Gillette where a subdivision was created that was not within, did not comply with city codes and there was, what, $5 million of upgrades that, that no one could figure out how to pay for once they requested annexation. Um, and then Laramie had their situation where their aquifer was apparently threatened by a county development. But this is, this is probably the hottest topic right now as we're trying to wade through this. It's one of these things that you know, I never thought much about until it came up. But if, if, a, if a bill went through the legislature as it's currently proposed, it's something that people after us are going to have to deal with for decades um, as, as cities expand. And so it's something where we really need to weigh in on this and help people understand that there's, there needs to be some balance with this. And so WAM is our voice on this, but we all have a chance to um, way into and obviously there are municipalities where this is less of an issue than it would be for Casper because Casper has been an expansion mode and uh, that's probably going to continue and we've gotten along pretty well with our commissioners to date in fact we just approved uh, didn't we last at our last meeting we approved the uh, a development in the Salt Creek Heights area where it was just no issue we just said yeah, it looks good, let's, let's, let's go ahead. But that's not how it works everywhere around the state. And so uh, that's when you get rules. So anyway, that's probably the hottest topic uh, as we head into the session. Um, let's see. Who's the actual voice of WAM that goes down and speaks to the legislature? Well, well, Rick is the default. The preference is for people like us to be there because they get tired of hearing the same voices over and over again. And so the more that we can <coughs> be present, the better. But it's, it's obviously a challenge for us to get to the So place. it's Rick if we can do that. Pretty much. Rick and Lori. Well, question for Charlie. Yeah. About, when is the, uh, the bill tracking system going to be up? Because I, I still can't see the bills that are pre-filed. It's not. Ah, I thought it was. Uh, I'll, I'm, I'm looking at it, and I, I couldn't find it the other day, and I thought maybe it was just not close enough yet. Okay. But I don't see any place where I can just, I, you, can, I you think I can look up a bill, but <coughs> I can't get the whole list. I'll have to look at that. And if it's okay. not a budgetary bill, it has a very it should small be like HB1. 
Jocelyn Powell, I'd but, be happy to follow up. Yeah, let, let's report. check on that. But and I encourage you all to use that the database. I, I I I sent the link, but to be honest, I didn't oh, try to uh, use it myself. You got sorry. it. Sorry, pushed the wrong button. Ah, it's there. Okay. You find it? Okay. Yeah. Bill <laughs> will be on the report tomorrow. I'm going to ask him about. So uh, as we get closer, I have to pay attention to these things as best we can because things things happen rapidly down there. So. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to say about business at the state level? I have to recording of it though. I have to party with them while I'm watching. Okay. Charlie, I'll probably go down for the 22nd, and uh, I guess there's a morning session on the 23rd. The yeah, it finishes up at noon on Friday, the 23rd. So. But and there is a legislative <coughs> uh, reception. So that's important. Room. At 6 p.m., and that's that's a, that's an important opportunity for us to yeah. visit with the legislators and hear what's going on, but also kind of express our concerns. So. Thank you, Charlie. Okay. Appreciate it. That's all I can call me if you have any questions or hear anything that's going on at state level, or if you read an article in the paper and you wonder what's going on. Sure, appreciate your time and effort in that. So is Nicole here in a murder case over there? <laughs> in Munich, Carter. Go ahead. Yeah. Carter's got an update. I think it's a vicious dog. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. It has to be a Is it the one that bit me or a this parking weekend? problem. That's the only thing that draws these things out so bad. <laughs> but it's not a snow obstruction. Uh, Go ahead, Carter. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the only thing I was going to add to Councilman Powell's uh, report is that uh, on Wednesday at 11.30, there is a uh, legislative forum in Bar Nunn at the hangar. No. Which I have not had the pleasure of being to. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Nice. I'll be going. there. Yeah. Very nice. Who else is going? I'm looking forward. I'll be there. High five, buddy. Well. So anyway, just a heads up. Maybe we should mention the uh, consensus fund agreement. Oh, okay. Sure. I don't think the rest of the council knows about that. Okay. We're not getting any money now. We're giving it all the county. Would that work? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm I think kidding. we ought to add some. I am just kidding. <laughs> let's that's, add some to That's it. not even funny. Go ahead. Yeah, let's not. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Councilman Powell. The, uh, the, the, the suggestion at the last breakfast meeting, which would have been this past week, was to uh, break out $25,000 with respect to each of the projects that have been tacitly approved, at least at this point in time, to uh, uh, forward towards Mills in an effort to keep mills in the loop and, and as a part of the uh, allocation process. The um, homework that I did with regard to projects that the city would be directly or indirectly involved in um, would indicate that we, it would appear that there is probably $25,000 available in the contingency that was set aside for the radio towers project, which as you know, consensus was going to fund the Alcova phase for the uh, for the uh, larger project that would include Casper Mountain as well. And so um, the other entities have agreed to carve out 25 out of their respective projects. And uh, if council's uh, okay with this, we can put together a quick minute action that would allow this to move forward in that regard. What is the project that Mills is working on? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman, that's a good question. They. Uh, um, evidently have been planning on some playground equipment replacement uh, in light of the schools moving their playground equipment out of their respective facilities and upon learning that they had some <coughs> safety and hazard issues with their city provided equipment. Have you go on take Dallas and Chris Dallas? I didn't see him put up his phone. He did it very well. Middle sneak. He was real cool He's about like it. Like a ninja. Okay, here, here I go. Here I go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's what he did. Okay, I'm doing it now. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Initially, that Mills had a funding stream set aside for a road that ended up since they they had built it, it was right. no longer qualified. And how much was that amount? Mr. Mayor, Council, three hundred thousand dollars. So they had three hundred thousand dollars. It was still the same pot of money. We had our divvy up differently and everybody's moved it since then. Um, it, this is frustrating and it's too bad we can't reach a consensus on it. We initially had them in the in the in the funding stream and maybe we should put them back. But no one can tell me why we would take twenty five thousand dollars from a radio tower project which 
were getting old at the time of my retirement and didn't exist out in that part of the county. Um, instead of taking it out of a replace new seat assignment. I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to sharing, divvying up the money and going back kind of the normal, the process has been annoying, but I don't understand the priorities. Oh, sorry. Well, I went out. You didn't looked, do a quest. I went out and looked. At the, I went out and looked at the playground. <coughs> and it's here. Old, here. It's rusty because it hasn't been maintained. And how much it's been used, it doesn't look like it's ever used. <coughs> but the part I don't like is I don't like having. I don't want to judge them about what they want the money for. Agreed. Agreed. I did. I'm, so I'm not going to. But I did look it over. But what I what I think that we have we should have some resolution that we do a master resolution that says what our priorities are so that everybody knows. Because sometimes I think we, we throw money at stuff like he talks about the seats at the event center. The seats are what's broken. They can get along without a bunch of fancy equipment that looks like you're running an airport to let our people in there to have a seat. I was down in Vegas and those hotels still don't have all that going on down there. So 132,000 or whatever they want up there at Spectra to, to put sh shine a light on me as I walk through there to see if I'm carrying something. Uh, they can get that, but they, they don't need it right now. And that, won't, that will not make us money up there. What will make us money, maybe, and the only reason I'm tilting a little towards the seats is because people might I think that would make us money. If people said, I'm not coming up because of the seats, but if they get a good seat, they'll come up and spend money. But they're not coming up there to spend money to go through all this electronic equipment and be padded down to see if they can get in the place. So what are our priorities, really? And so I would be happy if this esteemed body would come up with these priorities so that you wouldn't have too much thinking to do when you're in one of these negotiation battles over money. Here's where we take some money and we can live with this, and here's where we can put some money. Because you've got to redo this ice equipment, Mr. Manager. This is These are children. Uh, the, the mayor here won't be able to go to sleep if you take the ice rink away. And so you just look at some of this stuff, and I hope that if there's ever any more consensus funding, we, have a, we get an agreement with everybody in writing as to the percentage of the money they should get when the money comes down, whatever the amount is. But we know what the percentages are going to be beforehand, and then there's no argument. I don't want to argue with my neighbors about their money or what they want, how they want to run their cities. Just the way I don't want anybody telling me how we should we should run our city. So somehow we've got to come up with a plan that we don't have to face this deal every now and then. So before I forget, and I kind of got off track here, the judges would like to reschedule, correct? Yes. I'm sorry. I wanted to get that clear that we needed to do that. Um, Oh, this is to his point. Oh. Uh, it is an interruption. It's no, clear. Je and I'll get you, Jesse and Amanda. Go ahead, Chris. So on the condition that th this, I uh, can't make a motion. I mean, how do we know that there's not already enough people saying move it forward on the MIP sentence enhancement? If we are, um, we don't need to waste the judge's time. If we're not, then a presentation might change the minds. I want to make a comment about. It. I know where you're going to go with it, but I do need to make a comment. So, let, so let's do this. Let me let me get Jesse and Amanda's point about consensus. Then we'll move forward with yours. Oh, and Charlie, excuse me, and Charlie's, and then we'll move forward with the MIP. Does that sound good? Sure. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Jesse. I'll remove my. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, fine. All right, Amanda. Are you positive, Jesse? Yep. It's funny you should ask or mention priorities because those two rocks down there have our priorities that we created before you got on council. One of them is essential services and the other is public safety. So I don't know that I'm okay with agreeing to giving money for playground equipment that meets neither of those touchstones as opposed to public safety with the much needed repairs to towers. So can you make clear, can you clarify that the contingency fund, that nothing's being taken away from that, it was put in there for contingency, uh, an extra. Mr. Mayor, that's absolutely correct. We, we did build a contingency into the into the project with the initial scoping of the project. Okay. 
And now that we are further down the road and we understand the scope of the project much, much better, we do not think we are going to need that amount of contingency. That's okay. exactly right. And so that, that's why I feel comfortable recommending because okay. a project we think will be done, completed, and, and happen on time. Okay. So to your point, thankfully, then I'm cool. Okay, MIP. So Chris made a made a. Oh, sorry, Charles. Got to leave. I'm trying to move this thing forward. Go ahead. We did set priorities. That's how we got the consensus allocation. That's written out the way it was. If we could get a list of the overall priorities, the city, I'd really be happy. Well, we have a capital construction plan, but that. But regarding the consensus money, the reason that it came out the way it is, we had a discussion and we set priorities. And this is probably the end of the money. I've been told yes. by a couple of legislators yes. that we're looking for a way to revert it because they gave it to us not for what we're doing, but for a conference center, which it isn't being used for, so there's a little subversion going on there. I mean, it would be nice to, to think that we will, consensus funding would drop again at some point, but if, I mean, we only know it could be 20 years. They just need more rules. Well, it might not be I mean, right. if the oil and gas come surging right. back again. But we just don't know at this point. We just. But, but follow up, the reallocation process is also described for exactly these circumstances. But I had a comment on the ordinance this being. Sure, go ahead. So, a couple things about the ordinance. If, if, if that passes, that will make minor in possession one of the most serious crimes to commit in the city from the standpoint of a penalty. Because the penalty limits, I believe, and the judges can correct me if I'm wrong, are six months in jail and a $750 fine. So MIP is a status offense. If, if, if I come into a party and I'm a teenager and she has a beer and I, and I just did what I just did and the policeman seen me, they can charge me with minor in possession. Now, if she's drunk on a, on a case of beer, she technically gets the same the, under their old way of sentencing when they, when they, when they assumed they had this ability. They had a they had a, a sheet that they gave everybody, and everybody got the same sentence. Whether they touched the beer, whether they drank the beer, how much beers they had, uh, whatever it was. So, because it did run through my mind that what if we passed an ordinance that said all all cases in in Casper are subject to six months in jail and the maximum fine. And then you leave it up to the judge's discretion as to what they do with this. This, mis this MIP ordinance, the thing that bothers me the most about it is there's so many minors involved in it, and I don't believe the punishment is denning it. Even when they were, because it hasn't been very long since they were given six months probation and 20 hours of community service, and you had to go do an ASI, which was a with children was a clever way of finding out whether they did drugs because they had to go in front of a psychologist and question about whether they used drugs and, and everything. But on a status offense, you can prove, prove a person guilty if they're just in the vicinity of the alcohol. So maybe we need to overhaul the MIP ordinance as to what should be done. If, 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 it's, if they come in and they've, they've, they've taken a couple sips off their buddy's beer, now they're down. Now they're down there with a six-month probationary period. They've been charged with an ordinance that carries a six-month uh, jail sentence. That haunts them for a long time, unless the, unless they're treated as a juvenile. But I know that my grandchildren or kids that I know, people that have kids that are teenagers, they experiment with booze, and some kids get caught and some don't. When I got caught in the old days, they took my beer and they called the parents and. And we only did it one or three more times, and and a lot of people did pretty well after that. But you didn't have to ride that that record out for so long. And to this day, we still have minors who are Ill illegally sentenced in municipal court, and those records haven't been cleared up. As far as I know, the only one they've cleared up was my case. <coughs> but I am for. Uh, for having certain powers out there, but I don't like this one directed at minors because here's the biggest problem that will come, Bob, and I want you to hear this. You pass an ordinance putting jail on this, now you, you're charging 18 to 20 year old kids, none of them have money. 
So now they're, they're charged with a crime that carries a jail sentence, so technically they're entitled to have a lawyer appointed if they can't afford one, and a jury trial. So now you're going to encumber the municipal court system potentially with lawyers and jury trials. Now I don't know how that's all going to work, but what they will find if, if every one of if, if it's like before where you all come in, you get the same sentence, the lawyers are going to start showing up if, if they're facing jail and they have an opportunity for a jury trial because the juries will will look at it a little differently sometime than the judges do. So it's it so it's a it's a technical situation that can be very expensive to our city if we don't and I think they should address that in a, in a, in a meeting to, to, and our city staff should look into this because if we're creating a problem, because they've only had one, one or two jury trials at the most in the past two or three years in municipal court, so it isn't a problem right now. But when you throw a jail sentence on, and that's what, in the case I took to the Supreme Court, I mentioned that, and the Supreme Court noted that in a footnote, that yes, if you, if you start, uh, putting jail here, there is the issue of, of jury trials and requiring us to provide a full-time public defender, which is I think what we'd end up needing, depending on how many MIPs there are, and I don't know how many there are of minors. That's something I was hoping to hear tonight. How many of these arrests are there to begin with, and how many of them are minors from 18 to 20? So I think that's information I would need before I would ask for any kind of a vote on this particular ordinance. Okay. Jesse, and then Amanda. Thank you. I was just going to talk in favor um, of the recommendations that they had posed in there just to give them, um, I guess, all the tools legally of what they could give to a minor. My second thing I was going to add is if we do pass this, do you think you would sue the city? Would we be okay? If we did no, pass I, this, I, I will not sue the city as long as I'm, I'm on I'm the city, city council, Jesse. <laughs> okay. the, thing, the thing I am, and, I, and I'm not sure you have considered, when you, when you add jail, when you add jail, yeah. and the judges will tell you that, the person's entitled to a lawyer, and these are minors now. They're not like when you come in and you want a lawyer, and it's now you've got a job, you've got to hire your own lawyer. We have to pay for the lawyer, provide the lawyer for these people, because they don't, won't have any money. And if they say we want a jury trial, now they're in there. And who knows how long a jury trial takes? So that be, be she'll be in there. Guilty is that how that would work? Because if me? they accept the the sentence of well, if they just go plead guilty, but they have to start advising them. They have a right to a lawyer and they have a right to a jury trial. And they don't have to tell them that now. Okay. They just come in and plead guilty because they're kids. They don't have any money. Right. But then when there's kids coming in there, I think we have a duty to explain their rights to them, and I think the judges will tell you they do that. And, and then we have to decide what b bearing could that be. These are just kids trying to drink a little booze. Right. So if you want to, that sentence would be, the, would be the most stringent sentence there is that they give in the city, which is six months in jail. Uh, maybe a DUI gets more than that. I don't know, is it DUI more than that? No, it's the same. So, so they're gonna, a kid who touches a beer bottle can get the same sentence as a guy who has a DUI and crashed his car out here. If that's really what you want for our children, then you'll vote your way. But I don't think that's what I want for my children, for my grandchildren. I just don't see that being imposed. I got an MIP when I was 20. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I was illegally sentenced, maybe probation, if that's how you'd like to see it. But you know, I don't see it as a big deal. I think the judges have a good handle on their court, and they, you know, they do a good job at imposing the correct sentence. Well, I think, I think, they, I think they work on that. Yes, I do. I would, I would be much happier about this ordinance if I knew we had a full-time judge in there. Okay. That that's all they do. Man, I uh, want to go to Old Chicago. Can we hurry up? I'm go ahead, Amanda. Um, I'm serious. I'm going out to we're, eat. We're doing good on Chicago. time. Amanda. Despite his pontification, I agree with Dallas. And having spent 15 years working with juvenile delinquents, I do not, I understand the need for other options for sentencing. Um, I, I genuinely do. But I think that we've had this conversation a number of times where we're trying to move out of the punitive model into the restorative model. And we have a restorative juvenile model in place currently being piloted. So my question is, since we currently have a pilot for the restorative justice model, for which I volunteer, um, why would we not use 
what's already in place as another option to be able to take these status offenses and move them into that restorative model where they don't have that record at 18, 19, 20, and they don't have fines and ASIs and all these things that they can't afford to pay working at McDonald's. It seems to me like we need to focus on what the goal of sentencing is, and in my mind it's not to punish and to indemnify them to being in debt that they're never going to be able to afford, but rather to restore them and get them to have a better understanding of their actions and their consequences of their actions, which is exactly what the restorative model pilot is doing. Chris. Well, we'll probably have to postpone this till we can get the... Yeah, that's what I was going to uh, say. <laughs> but I, I want... There's another side of the world, and, and the kids... Dude, the world is not all unicorns and rainbows. It is and the nice. poor little kids that we're talking about are, at times, violent, terrible criminals. Waterboard. No, I don't <laughs> think we should waterboard them. But I believe the justice system has to have a restorative and a punitive aspect to it, or it will not work. What the judges are proposing gives them the opportunity to do something other than, it, while you have to put the punitive aspect into it completely, gives them the opportunity to put them through a treatment track and that kind of stuff. And if that doesn't take, then they take option B, their choice, and they finish out their sentence. Um, and if there's a jury trial, fantastic. Because then no one's going to get convicted if the 18 year old who's truly doing nothing is this close to a drink. Because no jury in Casper's ever going to convict him of that. But what will happen in the reality is you'll probably see the BAC was a point three zero, and they were getting ready to go jump in a car after getting in a fight. Uh, and so they don't do BACs on them, Chris. That's the other problem. Well, that's not a that's not an absolute, and, and that's not the way it always goes. I'm certain that there's times that they don't. Um, but there's 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 two sides to this issue, and it it can't be just characterized as an innocent kid being victimized by the system. An 18 and a 20 year old can be a dangerous and troublesome individual, and I'll guarantee you in this town. It's going to be driven by alcohol or drugs, usually both of them. Um, and so I think this gives them the tool. I, 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 I like the intent to be able to put them through, um, sideline them from going through the, the jail track, because you, you can't arrest the way you're out, or your way out of a problem. But it has to be an option. Or people would just volunteer to be sober. That doesn't happen. They have to rock bottom out somewhere. Unfortunately, we have a lot of alcoholic teens. And that's where we may be in today's world, but the thought that I may have not have put out there is maybe that ordinance should be made so that they have this option in all cases. I'd be awful with that. Because then then you have it across the board, but then we're going to become a punitive city. Everybody's saying we're our municipal court is one of the most uh, punitive municipal courts in the state. Probably is the most uh, punitive municipal court in the state. That's what lawyers are telling me. Now whether whether that's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, I don't know. But that's what I'm hearing. And very few lawyers appear in our court. So we don't know how these cases would stand up if now everybody's demanding jury trials and they get a lawyer. Which I that is the that that is the thing that bothers me the most of what this may end up costing us right. and what good it may do us. Because we really in, in terms of what a, uh, an alcohol court is, like they run over in circuit court, ours doesn't run that same way. And I know the manager met with Judge Huber, and he, you got a pretty good idea of the difference between their drug court and, and our alcohol court, I think. And so if you want to change that whole system, then so be it, we change it, but it's going to be a lot more expensive because we need a juvenile judge. We need somebody that comes in, like Cheyenne had, and just handles juveniles and has and, and is good with handling juveniles. Because truly, I don't want to see him grow up with a record. There's some, you're right, there's some that need that probably are going to have the record because they're committing other types of crimes. But for them all to come out with records when they're experimenting a little bit with beer, I don't like that idea. Well, I think it's, it's evident that we're going to have to 
reschedule and have a, I think we're kind of divided, so <coughs> definitely going to have to have that presentation. And this Dallas had said he needs more information. I think everybody else does. So we'll reschedule that and get it back on there um, to do that. So let's do the council round table. Chris, you got anything to share or add or anything? Water board meeting today. Um, just to give an update, the water tower at the airport, the base of it is in place. Um, and then the main tank portion of it won't be coming until spring. Isn't that right, Bob? Um, requested permission to purchase a new surface pump that was budgeted for. It was actually an underground pump that was budgeted for. The underground pump is fine. The surface pump failed. so. Just switch those two projects and that'll be in place. Emergency generator project was supposed to be up and running last week and they ran into uh, some installation problems and they're hoping that that is resolved soon, but we didn't really get a time out on when it might come back. Um, I think that's all the highlights. We'll come to the annual report. I can pass this around. Uh, I guess we'll put that in the uh, McLeod, whatever. Yeah, McLeod I'll be is. in there, I'm sure, yeah. but as long as I've got a paper copy. Basically, we sold less water, but we charged a little more per gallon, and it all came out in the wash. It's $399 difference, yeah. right, between this year and last year. Really? <laughs> one much. Yeah, yeah, close. $399. I want one of those water meters you put on to see if you're leaking water. Beamer told me about that, but I haven't ever seen anybody show up in my house before. <laughs> Manda. Test it out. Anything to share? <laughs> um, a group of survivors and I had a meeting with Chief McPheeters last week and it went very well. And I am hopeful that we will continue to move on improving relations um, and processes and how we respond to domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, yeah. Uh, I too was waterboarded today and survived. <laughs> Other than that, I really have not anything. I meant that joking. <laughs> I hope you understand. Some people probably don't think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't touch that one. You seem wrong. Sorry. Yes. Um, since we are talking about the Joint Powers Board of our water system, I was curious, is that something that the board puts in place in terms of late fees if somebody's late on their bill? Um, and gets a twenty dollar late fee, or is that something that's approved by council? How does that work? This man, yeah, please. This board <coughs> charges for so that the city pays for water from this water plant. Okay. And then the city assesses their fees individually. So everybody that's tapping into the main water system, yeah. all of the different municipalities and county entities, mm -hmm. um, are being charged for bulk water sales, and then the city's doing the Basic the, the joint power, the water board sends a check to the city to pay for the service. Okay. In bulk. And then the city is the one who decides how they do it individually. Okay. So the city would be instilling that, that fine? Or in Casper, or it could be, yeah, whichever municipality or area in the county that you'd be. Okay. Do you guys know if Rocky Mountain Power has a, um, a late fee for if you don't pay your bill on time? Just the reason why I'm yeah. bringing it up, somebody had brought it up to me. Uh, they weren't happy that they, they didn't pay their bill and got a late fee tacked on top of it when they're having a hard time with their bill. So I was just curious as to who um, has the late fee, I guess, yeah, I don't to direct know. them towards the I don't know the, the city. I guess I don't know. It would be us that would ultimately approve the mm -hmm. fees and the processes on that as the city okay. council. Okay. Um, huh? Something. Not for the pot line, no. but for ours, with the ones no. Jesse's talking about. Um, well, ours is a bulk fee. off a bunch of bills uh, yeah. when people didn't pay, so I'm not sure we have a, a late fee for And there's that LEAP program. Are you familiar with that? It's a program that people can apply for when they're low income, and it has to do with their power and gas bills, where um, they apply them if they get approved, then the companies help them through the winter months. Um, and that's called LIAP? It's L-I-E-A-P. Mm -hmm. I always used to ask Leslie and she scared me in my way. Well, income energy assistance. That doesn't include water though? Or do you know if it does? 
I think it's just gas and electric. Um, so gas and electric's doing it, why not water? That's just as important. That's a policy call for us that, um, that would be for the, the water department and, and for Carter. Um, I don't, I don't know what our policy on like fees are for seawater. Do you think that's something worth looking into? What do you guys feel about that? The fact that there's something. I think the fact that I can't people. answer any of those things <laughs> is, makes it worthy of a discussion on, on how we're billing is. I think so because there's there's plenty of people that fall on hard times for one reason or another, and I don't think they should be penalized. And we yep. should have some kind of. There's another a, another avenue through the <coughs> gas utilities advisory board. Okay. And that's strictly gas. Jesse Carter has something else that he could add to that. Thank okay. you, Mr. Mayor. Council does have that authority to set those kinds of responses uh, via ordinance and so forth. And as a matter of fact, Council will be entertaining uh, a conversation with regard to how, in fact, the utilities are managed and whether or not we need rate increases and those kinds of things. So that, that'll be a perfect opportunity, in my opinion, to cover that type of data as well. Okay. That's that'd, okay. Yeah, that'd be great to uh, address that. And smart meters, that'd be great to have smart meters. <laughs> the pilot program for yes, commercial and residential one, went last year, so I'd be interested to see how that was re received by those entities and if we could provide that for people in Casper. Uh, other things that I have for around the table, you know, we're talking about snow removal and things like that. I'm, I'm trying to find people or, or have some teeth when uh, they're putting snow into the street right ways, but what about when people are putting it onto the sidewalk? Granted, that's still right away, but it is a problem, maybe even around the 13th and Walcott area where there's elderly people that have to wait for, um, you know, their kids or grandkids to shovel the walk just so they can even leave their home. So that's kind of a problem too. So in not all cases, it's being pushed into the middle. Um, so, I mean, there are issues on both sides of that. And that was a concern that somebody had brought to me of their grandparent that is in that situation where their dad has to go shovel the walk so their grandma can leave. So just interesting on how we address that in certain parts of town. Um, late fees. I wanted to bring up to council's attention, I was going to talk to, or I have been talking to the mayor that's who approves our training, um, but if you guys aren't comfortable with it, I wouldn't want to pursue it further, and that's just training opportunities that I have. So I was recently appointed to a board for the NLC's Energy, Environment, Natural Resources Committee. And what they do, they advocate for cities and towns just like they do. And, uh, and being on this committee, you would meet in DC and present certain issues that are coming up on a local level, and then of course you bring it forth on a national level. Um, I guess the, the most current one, EPA is planning on making changes to the lead and copper uh, requirements for cities and towns. So, uh, you know, how that would affect the city of Casper, I'm not entirely <coughs> sure. So, I guess, long story short, going to DC, it would be, I think, around 3,000 maybe in total, 600 for flights. Uh, there are training opportunities there, just like what uh, WAM somewhat has. And, uh, you know, each one of those, I think, are is about $150. The biggest um, sticking one is the hotels. Hotels is really expensive in DC. And uh, there's another Guardian initiative that's being sponsored by Dale Carnegie um, with city employees. And being an elected official, I don't think I qualify for accepting public funds for that as the police officers are. So if I were to accept that, I think it might be a gift at that point, even though it is going to be used for training, because there were sponsors that say they would sponsor me for to take part in this program, because that's what it's there for. Um, and it's with the um, police department, fire department, but the fee is $1,500. Fire department's paying for their half. Um, sponsors, private donors are covering the, uh, the police officers taking part in that. Um, so that would be another one, you know, Fifteen hundred dollars uh, to go to that. If you guys think that's too much, happy to step down. If it's acceptable. and you've got funding for it. It's just a matter of you want to make sure it's proper to be able to accept. Well, the funding would be through 
how we budget fiscal year 19 or if there's anything left over from fiscal year 18 uh, to take part in any of those programs. So the city would be paying for it? Yeah. So the, the, the half, the 50%. Is it, and that's the 1500 Right. Okay. <coughs> That's the National League of Cities. Yeah. Well, this is separate from the, the okay. Dale Carnegie Because I get thing. every day I get <coughs> mail from, oh, you need to attend this conference. But the National League of Cities is, you know, I, th I think it's beneficial. There's a lot of programs that are being done. Oh, they are. But and then, a, again, they've got one a week. You know, we're paying for it on a yearly basis, just like we're using WAM. So I'm just trying to utilize something, a membership that we're taking part in. Uh, you know, if me not going, you know, maybe we should think about, you know, should we even be in National League of Cities, should we even be in WAM if only one or no members uh, are utilizing that membership? So it's just something to think about. You know, being a member of National League of Cities has its advantages in terms of the prescription program. Uh, they have a grant program, which is great, that I don't know if we're actually utilizing, uh, where you can actually just search easily all the grants to see what we applied for that we could use. Um, and I an arm of the city and other nonprofit organizations were curious if they'd have access to that. Since we do have that, I'm not sure if we utilize that or is that something that you'd feel comfortable them using our login credentials or should they come to a designated computer that you know they might be able to use to see if they could use or apply for a particular grant. Um, another collective bargaining tool like what was passed in the, on the state level for when Wyoming purchases a bunch of automobiles, for example, uh, a city or town can use that discount that the state has and purchase that vehicle from the state. Um, National League of Cities has the same thing, so when Los Angeles is purchasing a bulk playground equipment, for example, um, any member city could take part in that. And then uh, as it was presented when I was down there, um, you know, they can say that the three bids where we have to get three numbers <coughs> that still works because you have different vendors that are on that. So there's there's a lot of options out there that National League of Cities does have. It just depends on if we're using it or not. So Kanina and then uh, Amanda. I was just going to say, <coughs> I'm a fan of their programs. Granted, it's not free, but I think there's a lot to take away from those. and the more education and knowledge and opportunity we bring back to the council it can only benefit the community. So I'm in support. I agree. I've been through leadership Casper myself, but I almost feel as though it would be improper for a city council member to be going through a leadership course with city employees where it might impede their personal development because of whether real or perceived not being able to be fully open because of a city council person's presence. And I would hate... That's real. <laughs> and I, I just, I don't think that's the appropriate venue for us to be is with city staff. I think if that is something that you want to do as an individual, you can go through Leadership Casper and get the same kind of um, instruction where it's not going to have any effect on subordinates. Chris, do we have a in, in the city council budget? Do we have a training budget in that, or is it? It's just kind of in everything, right? Yeah, that's a training budget. Go ahead, yeah. yeah. Council, it's more like a travel budget, as it were, and okay. so yeah, that, that'd be where. And generally, the the mayor usually um, kind of goes through that, but I I kind of want to make do this as a collective, um, especially with the way tight budgets are, and I just want to have that conversation. I so I don't want to let you know I support Jesse. Um, and told them that I do support um, professional development and education, and um, I want to be able to do that and support him in that endeavor. So um, if somebody wants to take their personal time, um, it would be a good investment, but that's where I am. I kind of work in is at. So. But yeah, just, just to finish up, what Jesse was talking about with the purchasing programs and that kind of stuff, none of us would ever have known that probably had you not gone to those places, or everybody knew it except me. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I'm all right with it. Um, we stay within our budget and we go to classes that are reasonable. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, w one of the difficulties that Wyoming has with regard to participating in NLC 
is that uh, NLC is largely very, very, very liberal. And uh, the, the ironic thing with regard to the Energy and Natural Resources Committee is that very few people on that committee actually have energy background. And as a matter of fact, many of them hadn't even been to a coal mine until the city of Gillette had sponsored a tour for that committee to come to Gillette and, and walk through a coal mine, some of which wouldn't even get off the bus, mind you, to walk into the mine because they were so opposed to that as being a resource for our uh, state, our country. So if I guess if, if, if there were a priority that council were looking for, I would absolutely suggest that Mr. Morgan be a part of that, what we call the Ener Committee, so e that uh, somebody with an energy background will be in that conversation. Because I'm sure, now that Gillette doesn't do it anymore because of budgetary concerns and that kind of thing, um, Councilman Morgan would be the only one with an actual energy background to, to sort of fight back against the uh, the rolling tide of added regulation and, and uh, environmental concerns about energy resources and so forth. So that, that'd be one humble opinion with regard to that participation at the national level. That's good history. Thank you for hitting on that. Dallas. I'm all for people being highly educated, especially council members, <coughs> to to take it upon themselves like Jesse does to become <coughs> more educated. So I'm for him doing it. I want people to be politically sensitive to how much we <coughs> spend on it in light of some of our budget crunching and, and, and trimming wages and this kind of thing because that will be an issue. So, uh, but if, if uh, I, I think it's a great idea to do it. If we can afford it, then we can do it in a sensitive manner and we don't get beat up too hard by people who say, well, you could have done the same thing here in Casper. I don't know anything about that. The fact that he wants to do it, I say let him do it because he's got the energy for it. Sorry, be sensitive the with TV the just turned on to Familia de Oro. All this time. Okay. Stay at Trump <laughs> Tower. We were over. a night. So Jesse, it looks like you got the support of the council to, Great. to move forward with that for that conference in DC. And then one follow-up. So I won't pursue the uh, the guardian initiative, but it might be, you know, training worthwhile for um, next council after this election year. Uh, if that's something that the nine members would like to maybe pay for just for this body um, to take part in. So something to keep in mind at that point. Good. Thanks, Jesse. Oh. I knew a couple I more <laughs> things. Hurry up, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. We missed out on an entire uh, presentation that we should have seen and talked about. And it's only 6.15. We need carbs. We've got plenty of time. Okay. Lots of them. Two women are hungry. Watch Car out. Carbohydrate. Uh, <coughs> so no one no over the since car, since we were talking about the uh, MIPs and things like that, <laughs> decriminalization of uh, pot. That's a big item. Ooh. So at one point, the DA was never taking, you know, cases for, you know, small amounts of, uh, you know, recreational use type scenarios, and then finally they did. I know the police department was a strong opponent of saying, well, we're going to continue to write tickets. We need to accept it in court. I'm um, not stepping anybody's toes or speak for anybody, but it, do you think that's worth even thinking about for, for small amounts? Do you think that's a terrible idea? I mean, you have plenty of experience with that. Chris, I'm gonna kind Chris's of go face is stuff. red. Do you see this? <laughs> this should, this should Legalizing marijuana is not a good idea. Not le just, you know, tiny amounts. Should we get that? Because as I understood it, uh, when they're faced with, uh, what is it, three guilty pleas? So we do have some young kid going in there that pleads guilty to uh, a federal offense. He doesn't exceed, he or she does not receive any federal money, whether it's for college, any type of education and things like that. That's what's going to happen. Not, it's, it's not, not a IP, federal now. offense. It's a felony offense. Yeah, it's, it's a felony. Oh, felony. Okay, but that's something that has to be addressed at the state level, not the local level. Yeah, I don't want to address that issue. It would be an ordinance, right? It's not my business. That is. I'm not sure. No, the only thing I'm part of, if we couldn't move forward with the support of the chief, the chief of police. I think, though, whatever. Whatever tickets I don't know if we would be able to pull that one on our court. I mean, because then we have to get into the whole morality conversation. I don't know that we want to go there. I do not want to do that <coughs> either. Right? 
not possible, not no way. Thanks, no, Jesse. Not. You could have just been <laughs> happy with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking for my constituents. That's, that's what this does. Tell him to ask Steve Harshman to see if he'll get it through the legislature. And if he does, I'll look at it. Um, Thank you. Thankful Thursday. Uh, this Thursday for Safe Ride. You know, Safe Ride is a 100% donation type event uh, and program that benefits our community by keeping drunk drivers off the road. So Thankful Thursday at the Beacon. And uh, if you have too much fun, you can, of course, call Safe Ride. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys can make it. And we're down one DUI compared to 2016 for the year. It's because all the people that did so. that moved out of town when the oil boom crashed. So it doesn't do to some fabulous court system, believe me. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Thank Appreciate it. Go ahead, Kenny. I just have an individual that wants to know if they make a payment on a ticket through the courts. They want to know what bank that gets deposited at. Mayor, but most everything that we do with regard to transactions from a water bill component or a municipal court component would all be through first. Okay, so that's a pretty safe answer because I remember signing our like Just to prove that banking recently. disclosures, but yeah. wasn't there more than one bank? Yeah, on we've there? got two banks. Uh, Mr. Mayor, up, I think. We, we, we do do other business with, with uh, other banks, that's true, but, but for the transaction of that nature where we're collecting citizen dollars, it, it generally pretty safe to say that First Interstate is going to be that repository. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Dallas. I'm always aware of passing too many laws. <coughs> we have enough laws. And I'm glad you pointed out that obstruction law. Uh, that's the state law. It's enforceable. All we have to do is try it in court. If it's as bad as Mr. Beamer says the courts will see that and deal with it, in my opinion. Uh, there, are, there are plenty of cases that have interpreted the word obstruction, maybe, maybe not in Wyoming, but in other areas where they have a similar statute. I haven't looked for them, but I know they're there. Um, the uh, thing that I'm, that I would, I'd like to get a solid, Mr. Manager, I'm looking at you on this. I'm looking at Chief McPheeters back over here. <coughs> I really would like council seriously to have a plan started to get us a new police station. And if we have to start saving money every year, uh, we have 450000 we give to CADA that we don't know what they're doing. We could use that to build a police station. I second that. And, uh, <laughs> You're going to find out. And we need a police station. But, but I, I'm going to keep saying this just like the budget. Until we get a plan going and somebody says, one guy says, why don't we build the police station down where the uh, Plains Hotel is, or the Plains store, or the Plains furniture, furniture store is. Why don't we build one there? I, I don't know why we would either build one or not build one there. But I've asked the police chief and various policemen that I know, where would you want to put a police station? I'd at least like to know where we could be looking. But what do we have to do to get this concrete so these officers won't say we've been hearing about this for 20 years and the council won't do anything? We need to put the plan in position now. And this would be a good thing for your mayorship because then you'd be remembered as the guy who put this in position. And it'll be some future councils that fine tune it and do stuff with it. But it's, it's something we need to be doing. We, if we're going to have the top police department in, the, in this in the western hemisphere we got to have a, a decent police station and one that's functional for our men and one and women and women yes mostly our women and uh, and so you know uh, we got to do this and uh, I think that's my personal <coughs> humble opinion and I have 40 more minutes to talk because I got to outdo Jesse, but I'm quitting right now. <laughs> Give a comment to make it then, Charlie. Yes, sir. It just uh, by way of response, Mr. Mayor and Councilman, uh, the, the ideal opportunity for the council to have that kind of direction would be in our capital plan discussion that we will be bringing forward to the city council. Uh, At the dance party. Well, possibly, but in certainly in more detail as a part of the budget preparation process. You will get the opportunity <coughs> to bless and or improve the capital plan that we bring forward. Go ahead, Charlie. Well, I was just going to point out that 
we built a fire station every four year cycle, as I understand it, going back. And I think we finished the last one. Yep. And there's one in the process, I think. One in the process. Should it break, break ground this spring or something? Or that? stop that one and build the darn PD. And so, <laughs> and so this would be. So, with the. the so that's the building? Go ahead, the the one cent 16 yeah. will be on the ballot this fall. I want to And what an ideal time for us to talk about. Now that we're done with the fire stations, this would be a conversation we could have about how to spend one cent. Look at sixteen. McPheeters is smiling. If it passes. Really? Well, you get a you get a police and chief that's to something smile. Else you we must need have to. said something good. <laughs> that you is know what I mean? That is something we all need to be uh, thinking about and preparing for as we get. Yes, it because is. we are only nine months away from that election. Thank you for bringing that. Uh, we have, we have a lot of work to do to make sure the public understands what has been done with the one cent monies that we received. But we have, to, a lot of we have to prepare our people to understand why we need a police station, the fifth cent, or how we're going to finance this. So now is the time to start the whole process. If our people voted down, they voted down. But if we do a good enough job, do you think we need a new police station? Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Well, and even the study we paid for identified the dire need so for new we police can't, station. We can't. We, Mr. Manager, really, you got to put this on your top level priority <laughs> deal. Well, I hope you do. M Mr. Mayor, Councilman, honestly, the, the capital plan is the ideal time to get that in place. And so if that is Council's desire, um, then, then I would hope that you would give me that direction. Because I either want to put a police station down where Plains is, or I want to sell it to the tribes and they can put a casino. All right, Jesse, you got to come. <laughs> yeah, just real quick about the capital plan. Um, with creating the capital plan, it would be really beneficial, you know, whether it's PD-105-308 or whatever the number is, to have a page number next to that. So when you're navigating towards the back of it, that actually shows um, here's the source funding, here's why we're asking for the money for the capital plan. So it would just be easy to find that instead of flipping through the book and trying to find that particular <laughs> I prefer the paper copies if I could also have the paper, paper copy. Yeah. Yeah. And we do have a long term capital plan that's right. currently in place. So yeah, it's just tough to navigate. Are you done, Dallas? Yes. Go ahead, Jesse. Or uh, <laughs> Charlie, you got an update. Received the Climb Wyoming 2017 report. Great program. We helped fund it. Yeah. Thought it passed it around. They're doing great work. Uh, Leisure like Board met this. on the 11th, and um, we heard from the soccer group, the football group. And uh, it's just a study on how two organizations with very different missions can find a way to get along and, and sh use a shared space. And we seem to have trouble with that <laughs> in other areas, but it can be done because both organizations spoke highly of the other and the assistance that they gave each other to make it work down there and the, <coughs> at the soccer and football fields. Uh, and uh, numbers are up. Uh, the soccer program had 1,329 members. Including, that includes their adult program. Um, the rec center leagues are doing well, but uh, they're really struggling with officials and umpires. Um, and uh, the rec center itself is uh, being loved to death. That's the story we hear year after year, that uh, there are so many people that want to use that facility that it's hard for them to meet all the needs. Their summer camp was up despite the uh, decline in population people leaving town um, and we heard a lot about the rec center board and all the things they do with the beach day and craft fair and other things we sort of take for granted but these, these are people who volunteer to make those things happen uh, the other thing that happened with leisure board is we started to have a little discussion about the subsidies and that's been a hot topic uh, how much should we subsidize the rec center how much should we subsidize Hogada, how much should we subsidize the various facilities they operate and the argument, of course, is these have provide a benefit. They, we, the rec center gives people access to facilities that they couldn't afford in the private sector, et cetera. Um, but the discussion was to, and I, I think the city's already started down this road a little bit, is to set some kind of a target in terms of the percentage of subsidy that the city would provide. And rather than micromanage, here's how much we're going to charge for a towel rental, or here's how much we're going to charge for a day fee, to start putting putting that onus on the manager and saying, you need to meet this target and figure out figure it out. And whatever you need to charge for the towels, that's your business. We're not going to micromanage that. You're the manager. 
And I think we have talented people work for the city who uh, could step up and take on that responsibility if we simply said, we're only going to we're only going to fund you to this this percentage of your budget from this point forward. <coughs> so that that's kind of a discussion we had in Leisure Board, and I think the people on the board were you know supportive of going in that direction. So uh, DDA met mill levy passed twenty three to four. <coughs> uh, we uh, talked about food trucks as you can well imagine, and the uh, DDA is also struggling with how to balance all of that. Um, phase two for the Davis Street Station is on schedule to be completed in May. Uh, the DDA is also working with the uh, Visitors Bureau on obtaining a grant to work on wayfinding because we know there are people who get off the interstate on Center Street and they don't even know we have a downtown. And so that this, there's, a, there's a, a, a way to create signage to invite people into the downtown area. Um, DDA had their strategic planning session. It's, it's actually going on right now. Um, the first art, art walk is scheduled to take place in May. And I think that's all I have. Awesome. I just have a couple things. Uh, one, just a reminder of the youth town hall meeting uh, is next week, the YMCA. 7 p.m. So looking forward to that. Got uh, some invites out. Uh, we're working on that. Met with the YEC last Thursday to start shoring up the process for that. So it looks pretty good. We've got some people that are going to be participating in that and having a great conversation. Um, also, I went to Lincoln School on Friday and it was a blast. I, I forgot what it was when I was the dean at St. Anthony's School. I used to work quite a bit in the cafeteria during lunchtime, um, seeing and talking to kids. And so um, they were very, I don't think I've ever been so respected and I mean, they were so impressed with um, me walking in in a pair of jeans and a jacket, like, hey, I'm the mayor. Really? Do you work with Donald Trump? No. no I don't work with the president. He works for me. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was fantastic. The kids loved it. Um, it was a great time to meet all of them. Um, and so um, I'll be doing that. I'll keep you guys up to date the other schools that I visit. Um, and if any of you can make it to the town hall meeting next Thursday, I know we're all swamped with things. But if you stop by at the Y for a little bit, it's only an hour, 7 to 8. Uh, would love to have what you. What night is it on? Uh, Thursday night. I can't do it that night. Oh no, you're yeah, you get your your TV I'm show. A big TV star. I know you're a big TV star. Um, <laughs> but if you can, would love to have your your presence there to be able to. And I, I invited the chief. Um, I think the chief's planning on being there as well. This um, Thursday or next time? Thursday. Um, remind us again. I will. I will remind you next Tuesday. Uh, but we're going to have some people there from the school district. We're going to have some people in the community um, talking about some of the ideas that the kids had. So. That's my um, story. You know, I'm an alum of Lincoln School. Yes, yep. That's where my wife works. I really did want to go to that one. I just forgot about it. Yeah, that's a great school. It is. Yeah, they do a nice job over there. Uh, quick, uh, yes, please. Yep. Um, I don't know if you all have had the opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Cortez yet. Uh, Tim here. Tim, can you stand? He's dressed strange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not as fine. Yeah, in his typical garb, is he? Yeah. <laughs> As you all know, Tim is our uh, new Parks and Rec director, as it were, and uh, I, I really appreciated him hearing your conversation, Councilman, because uh, that's exactly along the lines of what he and I have talked about. So I want to cross-examine him. I want to find Dallas. out about some parties out of my trailer him and my sons were. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sure I heard that. Good idea. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, Tim, and uh, thanks for the time. Thank you. Welcome, Tim. Well. Welcome to your second tour. So is he going to oversee the trees? Yes. That's right. We're going to be talking. Mr. Lorax. Lorax. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's right. Someone like you. Tim, if you want to know the Parks and Rec department, just watch Parks and Rec. It's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I started watching it for training purposes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great TV show. It's on Netflix. During work hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other time? <laughs> All right, that's all we've got, guys. Uh, so unless we've got we something else. We have to plan our agenda. Oh, gender review. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, gender review. Oh, we got I it. I trust that he gender. knows what's going on. <laughs> did you want to get Amanda might be excused. No, yeah, we're hungry. <laughs> I, I, well, actually, Mr. Mayor, I did not bring the grid, oh, okay. a copy of the most recent grid, and so I'll have to get that out in the information packet this weekend. Okay. 
I didn't really use your guys' job, job anyway. Well, okay. the, yeah, I was the gonna decision say, of council was thing. we weren't going to have mayor manager. Well, I wasn't here for that, so I override it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said we were going to do it here. Okay. So but he doesn't it's have the grid. Right now, right? yeah. I can attest to the fact yeah, that Mr. Cortez is yes, well trained in parks and recreation. So uh, Cardinal send the grid out. The it's been established <laughs> and it was already established. Drinks are on you next time. So if anybody wants, so if anybody has any questions. And the interwebs, they can bring a ride to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. There's one agenda we can use again. <coughs> <coughs>